Okay. Thank you for coming today. Uh, again, I'm, I'm Ron Freeman. I'm the sheriff of Forsyth County. Beside me is Detective Tim Connor, the lead investigator in this case. Uh, and I appreciate you being here because we need the public's help today. And uh, we appreciate you being here to share this information. Um, give you a brief synopsis of what happened last night. Last night around 10 p.m., uh, Forsyth County 911 received a phone call of what sounded like uh, from a complainant, what sounded like a baby crying. Uh, the complainants, local area residents, heard the noise, uh, went and investigated, saw what they thought was possibly a baby in the wood line, immediately notified 911. Deputies responded. Uh, when they arrived, they found a near full term infant female uh, who was in a plastic bag in the wood line along a roadway off Dave's Creek Road in southeastern Forsyth County. Uh, deputies immediately rendered first aid. Checked on the baby. It, it was obvious that the baby was a newborn. We believe within hours that uh, from our discovery that the baby had been born. The deputies rendered first aid. Fire and EMS for Sac County Fire Department EMS arrived. Uh, rendered first aid. The baby was taken to a local area hospital, where surprisingly the baby was in good condition. Um, last report I had, the baby is stable. We do not have the identity of the baby or the baby's mother or parents at this time and of course we want to we want to understand and find out how this baby was abandoned in the wood line there uh, it's uh it is without doubt uh, a divine intervention that this child was found had it not been for those uh, observant uh, folks who were our citizens who called 911 we would be having a much different conversation today uh, we have I, I know many of us were at the hospital last night I've shared with you, this is a photo of the child. Uh, baby has temporarily been named India. Uh, and again, it is either a Caucasian, potentially Hispanic female, uh, full term. And again, by the grace of God, the, the child is in good condition. So what we're looking for, and I'm gonna turn it over to Detective Connor, and he's gonna tell you what we need your help with. Thank you, sir. Um, what, what we're looking for is a uh, female um, who was pregnant, uh, probably late, um, late term pregnant, and uh, had a child, or I'm sorry, um, all of a sudden, you know, doesn't have a child, uh, and it's kind of inexplicable. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to uh, determine how this happened to this child, uh, and then we have some concerns for the, the health of the mother as well. Um, so we, we just need the public's help um, in identifying uh, this child and um, the mother of this child. Okay, thank you, Tim. Uh, if, if you have any information that you believe might relate to the identity of this child, you can reach the Sheriff's Office 24 hours at 770-781-3087. If you wish to remain anonymous, we have an anonymous tip line. That tip line is 770-888-7308. Again, our anonymous tip line, 770-888-7308. If you have any information, as Detective Connor would say, of someone who was late-term pregnancy and now there's some, some kind of suspicious circumstance or inexplicably their baby's not around after that, uh, and you believe that you have some information, please share with us. We want to make sure that we understand how this happened. We want to make sure that we deal with both the criminal investigation as well as making sure that both the baby and the family that are related are taken care of from the standpoint that they need to be. Uh, with that, I'll be glad to take a few questions. So Sheriff, you believe this mother didn't want anybody to find the child? Well, again, we can only make an assumption that it was a mother that placed the child there. We know the child had recently been born, we believe yesterday. Um, can't say with absolute certainty that the mother's one that placed it there, but the baby was left in a wood line in a plastic bag. Was the bag tied up or was it kind of open and the baby was just there? Um, it was somewhat open, at least. Uh, again, our crime scene unit uh, is continuing that investigation. We're doing canvases in the area. Uh, our crime scene unit responded, collected evidence last night. We'll continue with that. Uh, we're looking at every avenue of what happened. And one of the people that called it in, was it near their residence or kind of describe the area? I know you said so, a tree mine. But so it, it is a small piece of, of isolated area along a roadway. It has a lot of houses on it, but this particular stretch is somewhat isolated. Uh, and there was one residence. Those folks had just returned home. Uh, we're not identifying those folks at this time. We, we're, we're going back and talking with them. 
but had it not been for their quick action, we would not have found this child. So did they have their window down and hear the child crying out or they could hear it from their home? They had just returned home and they were unpacking some stuff from a trip when they heard. Uh, one of the family members heard what they thought was a baby crying and I believe the story went that they, t they told one of, the, one of the parents they heard what they thought was a baby crying. They, they discussed whether or not it might have been a wild animal or something like that because you don't anticipate hearing a baby crying in the woods. Um, and so thank God they went out and investigated that and then immediately called 911. This is a tough situation, Sheriff, but what kind of charge might a mother face on this or a father? So there, there are a number of potential charges from abandonment to cruelty to children in the first degree to other things. Again, until we find out what happened, we're not going to speculate on whether criminal charges would be would be placed or whether it's not. This is a, this is a great opportunity to talk about Georgia's safe haven law. Georgia's safe haven law allows a mother up to 30 days after the birth of an infant to drop that that infant off at a hospital, a fire station, a police station, a sheriff's station, and as long as they turn it over to a person, a, a live human being. They cannot be charged with abandonment, cruelty to children. It is a way to make sure that a child like this is safely cared for. Georgia provider, you got 30 days to do that, not to leave a baby in the woods. Who came up with the name India and what's that about? So that was a local hospital who, you know, maybe Jane Doe was what we anticipate, but you know what? Uh, I was there with uh, one of our captains and, and a number of deputies, and I think they all uh, want to go adopt this child and kind of, uh, they feel like it's one of theirs. And so I think the hospital staff felt the same way. And I think they just, they wanted her to have a name. And I think it's fitting. Anything else? Do you have any leads on who this mother is or who this father is? At this time, no. We're, we're early in the criminal investigation. We're less than 12 hours into this criminal investigation, or a little bit more than 12 hours into this. Uh, and our entire criminal investigation division is dedicated to this one. Is this the kind of case you would use DNA to help you investigate? It is, a, it is indeed a possibility we could. And are uh, there area local hospitals in a metro area helping you with possibly looking at women who gave birth and things like that? Yeah, we, in cases like this, in, in cases where people are seriously hurt or in a case like this, we often reach out to other area hospitals to see if maybe they have treated someone with, with a condition that, that might relate to this. Sure. What will happen to the child now? The child is in the custody of the Department of Family and Children's Services for the state of Georgia. Uh, they'll determine what's in the best interest for the child. The child is still in the hospital at, at an area hospital at this point in time, but at some point, uh, again, I don't want to speak for DFACS, but at some point they'll take custody of this child uh, until we're able to determine the identity of some familial identity, and uh, they'll probably place the child in foster care. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? Are there any cameras in the area in Savannah? Uh, we're doing another neighborhood canvas today. Uh, it was obviously last night was, was nighttime. It was raining. That's one of the other things. Unfortunately, weather conditions were bad last night. So it, again, at divine intervention, we found this child. Um, but we will. We'll be going back and looking at everything that we can that might have any kind of cameras. But unfortunately, this is somewhat of an isolated area. The baby, was it, was it found? What was she found with like? baby blanket, anything like that, or was it just a bag? No, I don't believe so. No, no. It was inside of a plastic shopping bag. Nothing yeah. else. Nothing else. Like a Walmart, Walmart bag? Or a yeah, bag. Tie, if, if you want to use, I uh, wouldn't say that store oh, name. But, that store, yes. but a, a, yeah, a, a plastic, grocery bag. plastic grocery bag that yeah. we're, we're familiar with was what the child was found in. Was so you know the name of the store, you just don't want to share it? Correct. Was the umbilical cord still attached? Any um, indications it was born there? Or was that, that's still part of the crimes that we're doing, but there were indications that the child had very recently been born. So there's certain things, of course, we're not going to talk about at this point in the investigation, but there were indications the child had possibly within hours had been born. Uh, but certainly we believe with yesterday and probably late yesterday the child was born. Maybe in the woods or was brought to the um, it, we haven't we haven't concluded that at this point. That's not one we want to talk about at this point. Did you find anything else in that area? Our crime scene unit is continuing that search again today in the daytime. Uh, anytime we do that, we pick up trash. We pick up anything else we find. It could or could not be related. But you know, if we found a 
for instance, a, a piece of paper, we would take that piece of paper and it may or may not be, or a plastic bottle or a beer bottle or whatever the case would be, just in case that it might have a fingerprint or something like that that could be related to the case. So we collect evidence, period. Uh, oftentimes when we do that, we find that it has nothing to do with the case, but yeah, they'll take anything that was in the area. In your line of work, you see a lot of things and yeah. totally random, but with this, I know this has to touch you some. Yeah, they were, as I said, there were a lot of deputies there last night and uh, most of us are fathers ourselves. Uh, there was, it was and, and fathers or mothers ourselves. And there was a lot of angst last night about the condition of this child and to make sure that she was okay. And a lot of gratitude that she turned out to be. Uh, so in, in 32 years, it's the first one I've had of an abandoned child in, the, in this manner. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna dedicate the resources it takes to be able to find who's responsible for this and why this, ha why this happened. Has anything like this happened in this area before? Not that I recall in my 30 plus years here. And you've been on, with the sheriff's office for 32 years? I've uh, been here for a little over 30 years. So from that side, again, if as we get some additional information, I'll look for another update for you. If we, we make a break in the case, once we get to that point, we'll notify you and do that. Uh, if we get some additional information that you could share with us and you're willing to share for us to help us identify, help identify the, the family members in this so that we can bring uh, some conclusion to this, then we'll certainly share that with you as well. All right, thank you for being here today and thank you for sharing for us.